on this first Sunday of Christmas, also the seventh day of Christmas. You can pick either one you want. Um, so, yeah, you know, the rest of the world thinks 12 days of Christmas are the 12 days before Christmas. We all know better. We all know it's the 12 days between Christmas and Epiphany, right? Yeah, yeah. So, happy seventh day of Christmas. Um, what is it, seven? I'd have to sing the whole song, you know. Seven swans are swimming. Seven swans are swimming. <laughs> Not there. This is a lake. <laughs> so I hope that you all have a swimming experience. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm Pastor Mike Girlinghouse, for those of you who may not know. <coughs> welcome to any visitors who may be among us. I, I said to somebody this morning, and it's weird because I'm technically a visitor, too, except for my office is like right over there. <laughs> so it feels like I'm at home. Um, and I always feel like I'm at home with you all. So anyway, it's good to be here. Uh, for those of you who might not know, I am the uh, interim campus chaplain for uh, LCM Canterbury, um, both located here and then over on San Francisco at Chap Canterbury Chapel. So it's great to be with you. I think everything you need will be on the screen. And uh, unless there's anything else that needs to be said, let us begin. I can stand to our feet. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We also acknowledge the Dine Navajo and Hopi peoples who are the traditional custodians of the Flagstaff area on which we meet. We pay our respect to the elders past and present, and of all indigenous peoples of Arizona and of the United States. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, on this first Sunday of Christmas, is O Come All Ye Faithful, it's in the Red Hymn Book, hymn number 280. <laughs>
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in the prayer of the day on your faces. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature. And now, for one your story, in your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 61st chapter. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bride, bridegroom decks himself with the garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all the angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven and heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded, and they were created. Who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them the law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you can see monsters and all beasts. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over heaven and earth. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants. The children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel according to the second chapter of Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. So, not long after Jesus was born, eight days to be exact, his parents bring him to the temple to be named. And then, when the time of purification was over, in other words, the time that Mary wasn't allowed to go anywhere, um, they bring him to the temple again. What we see in Luke, which is Interesting because Luke was a Gentile and is writing to Gentiles for the most part, but he paints a picture of Mary and Joseph 
as being devout Jews. They do what is required for the law of Moses. Jesus was raised in a Jewish household by devout Jewish parents who observed the Mosaic law and taught him that law as he grew. And that begins here, as they bring him to do what was required. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So, guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to the people of Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. And Simeon blessed them, and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your soul too. Now there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus, who has come among us to show us your love and your grace and your power. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I don't know about you, but I find waiting infuriating. Any of you like to wait? <laughs> Anybody? You know, like, do you, do you intentionally go out and, and pick, like, the longest line at the supermarket? I just love waiting. Do you look forward for tra to traffic jams? <laughs> Me either. When I was in high school, I wanted to be a newspaper photographer. Actually, my, my ultimate dream was to be a National Geographic photographer. But I figured the best way to do that would become a newspaper photographer first, kind of learn the business. And so on career day, they sent us out and helped and had to shadow people that were doing the jobs we were interested in. So they hooked me up with a local news photographer from our tiny little small town newspaper. And I spent the day with them, and it was really cool. But we spent a lot of time that day just standing around. And he said, you know, that's kind of typical of a newspaper photographer, especially in a small town. He said, because, you know, we're not the main event. We're there to take pictures of the event, and then we just need to wait until they're ready for us to take the picture for the paper. He said, there's a lot of waiting in this. And I went, oh. 
I guess I better learn something about patience <laughs> if I'm going to do this. So I immediately set to work trying to teach myself to be more patient. So I did indeed pick the longest lines to wade in, and I did other things that would force me to become patient. And I think in the long run, I am a fairly patient person. <coughs> Not that I like to wait. In fact, just the other day, I was coming up here to work, but I had to stop through Sedona for something. Anybody been in Sedona recently? Oh. Oh. You know, right where 179 comes into 89A, they're doing all that construction. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's about the speed we went through that roundabout, right? And I, as I was driving, I said, practice your patience, practice your patience, practice your patience, it didn't work. <laughs> Waiting is hard. <laughs> Waiting can be hard, especially when you're anticipating something, right? When you can see something coming. In our gospel lesson today, we hear of Simeon and his waiting. Now, it doesn't say how old Simeon was. It does say very clearly that Anna was 84. Whoa. Yeah, did somebody just go, whoa? <laughs> <laughs> My mother's 86. It's not as old as it used to be. Um, but it doesn't really say how old Simeon is, but the implication is that Simeon's been waiting for a long time, maybe a lifetime. And we kind of always picture Simeon as being older. Why? Because God has promised Simeon that Simeon would see this child, see the Messiah, see the Savior, see the promised one before he died. And when he sees Jesus, he says, okay, I can die now. We don't know if he was 35 or 45 or 55. We really don't know. But he'd been waiting a long time. A long time. But of course, the Jewish people have been waiting even longer. 500 years, to be exact, they had been waiting, ever since the Babylonian exile. Think about that. that. These people have been waiting for the Messiah to come for 500 years. That's like the time between now and Martin Luther, the Reformation. That's a long time. Simeon had been waiting, and waiting, and waiting. And suddenly, driven by the Holy Spirit, he goes to the temple, and he's there. And Simeon beholds the promised one, the Savior of the world, the Messiah, and he rejoices. And he rejoices, because finally, the waiting is over. <clears throat> the waiting is over. So on this day of New Year's Eve, y'all have party plans tonight? Mm -hmm. You don't have to admit that if you... But um, on this day of New Year's Eve, before we launch into yet another year, my question for you this morning is, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for on this day? Now there's the big stuff that I think most of us are waiting for. Like, I'm waiting for world peace. Yeah, oh boy, is right. I am waiting for them finally to bring an end to the wars in Ukraine and in Gaza and in Sudan. I'm waiting for something finally to be done about climate change. Maybe you are too. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for justice to be done by people who are left on the margins of our world. But I would guess that in addition to these big, huge, massive things that we, maybe most of us are waiting for, there are lots of other things, smaller things, personal things, that we're waiting for. Like maybe you're waiting for a diagnosis, to hear the results back from some tests you've taken in the last week or so, or as I've recently found out, maybe you're waiting to just even see a doctor. <laughs> maybe you're waiting for some major change in your life that's coming, like a new job, or maybe no job, or graduation, or retirement. 
Maybe you're waiting for some conflict in your family to finally be resolved, for some relationship to be restored. Maybe you're just waiting for some meaningfulness in your life. Maybe you're just waiting for some hope. What about your spiritual life? What are you waiting for there? What are you waiting for in terms of your relationship with God and Christ? What are you waiting for? Maybe a deeper faith, a deeper sense of commitment. Maybe you're just waiting for it all to make sense. <laughs> like, gosh, I'm not even sure I believe this stuff. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. What are you waiting for on this day? What are you waiting for on this day? The good news is that Jesus is among us. Our Lord Jesus is among us. Jesus is God with us, Emmanuel. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh, dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. The name itself, Jesus, that the angel tells Joseph he needs to give to the baby, means he saves. He is the one who brings wholeness and peace and life and grace and forgiveness and mercy into our lives. We come to, came together just a few days ago. I was here, I know. <laughs> we come together just a few days ago, right, to celebrate the fact that Jesus is born, that Jesus is the one who is among us and who is among us still. But on that day in the temple, on that day in the temple, there were probably lots of people there, right? It was a busy place. People came and went, made offerings, sacrifices. But it seems, at least from Luke's telling, that only two, only two people there recognized this baby. Only two people there recognized this baby being carried by this fairly poor peasant family, husband, wife, into the temple. Only two. For everybody else, it was just another poor family bringing another baby to do their thing, right? So often, I think, we celebrate Christmas Eve with the candlelight and the beauty, and we praise God and we sing all the wonderful Christmas carols that indeed Jesus has come and is among us. And then a week later, we just go back to the realities of our lives, to the waiting, to the hoping, to the wondering. And the baby Jesus just sort of passes through our temples, and we go, oh yeah, there he goes, no, back to it. Isn't that right? Isn't that so often the case? But my brothers and siblings, sisters, my siblings in Christ, it's still Christmas. <laughs> Amen. The seventh day. Thank you. The seventh day of Christmas. But even more than that, the good news of Christmas, the good news that Simeon could see, that Anna could see, is that God is with us now. Hallelujah. God is with us now. And in Simeon could see through the eyes of faith. Terry was sitting back there. I think some of you met her. And I like Christmas movies. And one of our favorites is um, uh, The Polar Express. Have they seen The Polar Express? Yeah, a few of you. Uh, it's a Tom Hanks animated thing. But the main point of that is that, and they say this several times in the movie, is that seeing is not believing. Believing is seeing. Now they're talking about Santa. Okay, <laughs> set that aside. But I think that the message is the right one. <clears throat> Believing is seeing. It is through the eyes of faith, just like with Simeon, just like with Anna, it is through the eyes of faith that we begin to see Christ with us, Christ among us, Christ for us.
So when we trust in the promise, like Simeon did, that we begin to understand that God is there for us, even in the midst of all the brokenness of our world and of our lives. Because you see, believing in Jesus doesn't suddenly mean that the whole world becomes rosy. <laughs> you know, that everything is perfect, that everything's nice. We can catch that pretty clearly, right, from this text. What does Simeon say to Mary about her son? Oh, and by the way, a sword is going to pour, pierce your soul too. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and Anna. Anna has been in the temple for years and years and years because her husband died when she was young. The reason she's in the temple is because she probably has no place else to go. She was probably one of those folks sitting out on the corner with a sign saying, well, you know, I need food. Help me. For years and years and years. The coming of the Christ child, the coming of the Christ child doesn't fix all the problems of the world. But is God with us in the midst of the brokenness and the struggle and the pain and the yearning? And through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of faith, we find the power to persevere, to rise up, to reach out to one another in care and in love. Because for us, the waiting is over. The Messiah is here. The Messiah is here. And that gives us the ability not only to persevere and the strength to confront what we must, to live in this broken world, but it also gives us the ability to sing God's praises. In spite of it all. In spite of it. My guess is, starting tomorrow, 2024, will be just as tumultuous a year as 23. Maybe worse. We're not going to go into politics. But the good news is, God is with us. Christ is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
In God's good news of great joy for all people, we offer our prayers for ourselves, for our neighbors, and for the world God loves. You inspire faith in our hearts and call us to rejoice with our whole selves at the salvation you bring. May our churches, places of belonging for all people in the fullness of their being, raise up the gifts and the witness of people who are neurodivergent, living and with disability, or bearing invisible illness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your praise is sung throughout creation in all times and seasons. As the new year turns, ground us in your changeless and sustaining love. Keep us attentive to the rhythms of the cosmos and inspire us to live in harmony with all the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Give hope and stamina to leaders who work tirelessly for the sake of the most vulnerable. We pray especially for organizations working on behalf of children to provide basic needs, to protect from abuse and neglect, to address trauma, and to rescue from trafficking. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Sustain all people who, like Cindy and Diana, have been waiting for salvation and wholeness, especially Martha, Rich, Nick, Dolly, Minnie, Molina, Joe and family, Bridget and family, Cynthia, Michael, Anne-Marie, Laura, Deborah, Jess, Jeff, William, Kyle and family, Mike, Nancy, Julie, John, Caden, Jean, Jane, Paula, Aurora, Brenda, David, Elizabeth, Jacob, Mike, Rebecca, Tammy and family, Aiden, and Spencer. We pray especially for anyone living with cancer or chronic illness, all people who are in physical rehabilitation or addiction recovery, and those experiencing complications from long COVID. COVID. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Let this community of faith be a joyful <coughs> and welcoming place for all ages and generations. 
Teach us to honor the wisdom of children, the inquisitiveness of youth, the thoughtfulness of adults, and the knowledge of elders. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the ELCA Good Gifts Project, our monthly basket recipient. May those who serve be touched by your grace through our offerings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For God, this day we continue to pray for Pastor Kurt and his family as they mourn the death of his father. We ask, Lord, that his time away from us at our vacation might be a time of rest and renewal. We ask that you be with him as he travels and bring him safely back to us here. We thank you this day for Kim Howell, as Kim celebrates their birthday, and to all of those who celebrate during this time and this season. We ask you to be with us as we enter into a new year. And Lord, we ask, as always, that it may be in a year of peace, of unity, and of justice for all of those people who are suffering. Lord, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. Right. We give thanks for all the beloved who lived with expectation and departed this life in peace. Sustain us in joy until we join them around your throne. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Spirit. Abide with us, O God of mercy. Receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. Amen. 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 Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share that peace with one another. Peace with one another. hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will, 
Blessed are you, your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. He said, Do this to remember me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And again, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, and he said, Drink from this cup, all of you. For this cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Again, he said, do this to remember me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit to come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel. Word of God, incarnate power of the Most High. One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is the Lord's table, and the Lord invites you to come and to dine with him, to taste his forgiveness, life, and salvation in bread and in wine, in the gifts of his body and his blood. Please.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Amen. Good news. Thanks be to God, and we.